So in this video, I'll be making a inlay ring using some silver sheet metal, some black onyx, and this wire that I made maybe a couple months ago. So this wire is copper, brass, and silver all wound together and then I soldered it and then went through and wound it again and repeated that process about five to six times so everything is solid and one piece now and it has this cool like almost wood grain look. There's actual term for this but I can't pronounce it so I'll put it on the screen. But you need a roller mill to make this. So I'll make a video showing that process after this one, but just know you can make this wire yourself if you have a roller mill and a drill. So first things first, I'm going to need to get the size of the ring, which I already know it's a size 10, and then I need a measurement for it. So I'll just take my calipers and a size 10 ring. And this is a little different than the one I normally use. This is for thick rings because I'm going to be making this a thicker ring. And it actually helps a lot to use one of these when measuring your fingers because if you use a thin one and make it exactly to the size of the thin one, the thicker ring might not fit your finger. So all I'm going to do is take the 19.3, I'm sorry, 19.65 and put it into my calculator. And then I'm going to need to measure my sheet metal, which I already have, and it's 0 0.6. So I'm going to add that. It comes up to 20.25 and then multiply it by pi. And that gives me the amount I need to cut off from here to make my band. So when you have a sheet like this, it's really good to use the already straight edges to make your um, bands. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to make this about 8.2 millimeters. So I'm just going to set this and lock it and then use the sharp bits here basically to scribe a line. So that is a 8.2 millimeter line. Then I'm going to set this to the 63 58 It's close enough and use this edge and go across here to make another line. So now, let's see if you can see this. This is the part that I need. So I'm going to cut and saw that out. So when I do cut these out, I always cut the line straight first, the smallest one, and then cut to it. So once you have this, it doesn't really matter how bad the top is as long as you uh, file this down smooth because I did pretty bad on that cut job actually because I'm normally over everything and the camera's kind of in the way. So with this piece though, we're going to want to square up the ends, well at least one end because these two should be perfectly square because the piece I had was cut perfectly square. So you can use one of these and it'll make it so you can cut down your edge to 
to make sure it's as square as possible. But when doing this, make sure you don't make it stick out too much. You just want it to barely come out. I'll just take a normal file. And there we go. So this particular silver is actually, I believe, spring hard or half hard. Either way, it needs to be annealed which means I need to heat this up so I can soften the metal and work with it easier because we're going to have to bend this into a ring shape. So whenever you're going to anneal anything, you're going to make sure to want to put it onto something that's not going to burn. And make sure you have ventilation. I like to sit my piece up like this. So I can actually see how everything's going and it will actually start to slightly bend under its own weight. And you just want it to get a little bit red. And hold it at that red look for just a couple seconds. And then I'm going to take this and quench it in some water. So here it is all quenched and cooled down so I can actually deal with it. And then I'm just going to take my mandrel. It doesn't need any particular location. I just need to start rounding this. So I'm going to do it back over here where it's not at a, um, a taper. So, once I have it like this, I need to bend each edge to one another so they meet up as flat as possible. And to do that, I'm just going to use some normal pliers, basically, that have no teeth in them so it doesn't leave a bunch of scratches in here. And you want these to line up as tight as possible because when the solder is going to flow through here, the tighter it is, the easier it is for the solder to go across and connect both pieces. So one thing that I like to do is take it basically like this and push it past itself and then pull it back so it's basically spring-loaded right there. You want to make sure that they're on the same level to like going across. So this is the most finicky part of doing this. And if you look really close on here, there's pretty much no gap there. If you do have a gap and if it's uneven for whatever reason, you can take your jeweler saw and cut a straight line through here and it'll make both sides match, but be careful not to take too much material off because it'll start shrinking your band and then it won't be the right size. So I'm going to pickle this and get all this um, tarnish off and then I'm going to solder it together. As that's pickling, I want to talk about my ventilation setup. If you're going to be soldering stuff or using basically anything that I use, you need ventilation. And this is a cheap little uh, solder smoke fan that you'll notice probably doesn't really work that well but it's not just this fan that I'm using this tube in the back here goes to another fan that's in the window that is sucking everything through I basically just turn this on to help it at this area okay so now it's all cleaned up and we can solder this together I'm going to be using a third hand 
to hold it for me with the solder point or solder joint pointing down. So I'm going to add solder to the inside here and then go through the process of soldering it all. But before I do that, I'm going to have to add some flux to it. So one thing you can do so you don't have to chase around your flux when drying everything and soldering it is you can heat this real quick until all the flux is dry. Like that. And then add your pieces of solder. I'm going to be using hard silver solder for this. So that should be enough. And I'm just going to slowly heat this all the way around so the piece is heating pretty evenly. There we go. And then you're going to want to quench this just so you can cool it down and handle it. So there we are. It's all soldered together. And I could throw this into a pickling solution now to get all the uh, residue and everything off of here. Okay, so here it is all cleaned up. Now we need to round this all back out using the mandrel. So normally what I do, because this is gonna be really annealed now and easy to bend, I'm just gonna push down So we need to get it to the 10, and as you can see, there's a lot of gap right here that we can hammer down to make it round. So I'm going to use this mallet, which is made from rawhide, and just tap this until it rounds out, and continue to move it down. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same. So here we are with it completely round now. It's a little flared on either side of this because I used this to basically stretch this to exactly where it needed to be. But that's totally fine. What I'm going to do next is take down this weird flare. So there's two ways you can do this. You can use a hand file. And you could put it onto your mandrel again, so that you have something to hold it with. And just go over it. And you'll see that you're only making contact with the outside edges. Also, I have the solder joint here that I want to cut down. It's not going to matter too much because this is all going to be covered completely, but I want to make sure it's pretty smooth right there. So the ring fits. And now I'm going to make the outer bands similar to how this one is. So we'll have these on it. So we're going to be using this as our wire. It's about a little over a millimeter thick. I would say about eh, one point. I'm going to go with the higher. I'm going to go with low end and be 1.1. So I'm going to take the ring, um, the inner band basically, and measure the outside of it on the actual edges because they're going to be a different size. So I'm going to take 
that measurement and do the same math I did last time. So basically I'm going to take 20.97, add 1.1, and then multiply it by 3.14, which will give us our number. And we'll just take that. That'd be close enough. And now with this, I'm just going to mark and cut it. So I'm just going to make this one into a ring now to make sure that everything is going to fit properly and I, then I can make adjustments for the other side because it's a little bit bigger on the other side. But once everything's done, that won't matter. So this particular piece is work hardened from going through the mill so many times and it's actually square, which is a good thing for this, which makes it easier to solder everything together. But I need to heat this up and anneal it so I can bend it easier. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and do the same thing we did before, and especially because this is square wire, I'm going to make sure to do it on a flat area, because it likes to bend all weird if you don't. So I'm going to pickle this and get it all cleaned up and ready for solder. Unfortunately, I have to use silver solder on this, but I'll clean it up as best I can so you'll never see it, unless you're really looking. So just like before, I'm going to flux this piece and add a piece of hard solder to it. and then just quench it. So there it is all soldered together. I'm just going to put it into the pickling solution and get it all cleaned up and then round it all out. So here it is after the pickling solution. And now I'm going to round it out in the same way I did with the first band. I will have to be careful with this one to make sure it stays straight and if it does start to curve on me like it already has. I'm going to have to take it and use the um, flat surface here and just hit it down until everything's flat. So now I'm going to see if these will fit together or if I need to stretch this out a little bit more. I want them to be as tight as possible. So there we go. They both fit together now. I actually, as you saw, had to hammer this into it and it's not going anywhere. And then I'm going to add solder on the outside and make sure everything is stuck. But before we do any of that, I'm going to make another one of these bands so we can put it on the other side. And I still have my last measurement from the other one that I'm going to use to make the other band. So here it is after getting both bands onto the center. And now I just need to solder everything together to keep this as one piece so I can put the inlay in. So to solder this, I'm just going to put flux over the top and then put a bunch of tiny bits of solder around. So when everything flows, it'll basically flood the top and fill in the gap between the two bands. And for this, I'm going to be using medium solder. So 
So there we go. It looks like it has no gaps in here. If it does, you can always quench this, flux it, or quench this, pickle it, flux it again, and add uh, solder pieces wherever there are holes, and then just do it again until all the holes are filled. Okay, now that we got it all cleaned up again, I'm going to do the other side with the same technique. So this is some raw onyx, and I'm going to break it up using basically this little cardboard roll and a hammer. This is a tack hammer. So the reason why I'm using the tack hammer is it can reach farther down in this, which means I can have higher walls on my little cardboard tube. Oh, and if you're doing this, make sure you do it on something hard, like the anvil. So, here is all the pieces I got off of that. You can make these smaller if you like. There's tinier pieces underneath, and you can use a mesh screen to separate them all out if you want to, which I already have. And you're going to want some bigger pieces like this to get the design that I'm going for. So that's why I'm not crushing it into just a powder. But as you can see in these bags, I already have two different um, grits, basically, of this. So I'm going to be using these. I'm also going to be using this little bit of opal. and some brass powder. And I'll have links to all this in the description. So now that it's all cleaned up, I'm gonna clean up the sides to make sure everything is going to be flush and there's no holes underneath any of the solder points. And I'm gonna use some 220 grit sandpaper and just a little bit of water. So there's still some gaps and some parts that are just a little too far down that would require too much sanding of this and you'd lose a bunch of your material. So I'm going to add in some more solder here, just like before, place the solder over those points and flood them and then grind it down using some sandpaper. Okay, now that the ring is all cleaned up on the sides and there's no holes or gaps or anything like that we can start filling it in with our material. And there's gonna be a couple different ways you can do this. I've shown before that you can use an old mandrel that you don't really care about anymore. And basically just cinch it down on top of it like that. And I use a tripod like this that has a empty gap in the middle. And then I can use this to roll it around and place everything. But I recently found a company that sells something that makes this a lot easier. And here they are. It's from ringsupplies.com. And these are ring mandrels for different sizes that you can put it onto it and then screw that in or tighten it technically and it'll expand and grab your ring and then you can work on it like this. So one thing you can do is if you had a drill that was big enough, you put it onto here and hold this with a drill and just turn the chuck as you're going. I have a lathe now, so I'm gonna put this in the lathe and use that to do this. So here's everything on the lathe and I can turn this as I please and this will stay completely 
stiff and I will be able to work around that. I also put a piece of paper underneath it to catch anything that falls. And I'll be using a thick and thin um, CA glue. So to start off, I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the ring. And then I'm going to manually start putting my chunks of onyx on. So the stuff I was spraying on there is an activator or an accelerator for the glue. So now it's completely hardened. And I need to switch out my paper. So what I'm going to do now is actually turn the lathe on and get this spinning. And I'm going to use a dust mask and some goggles or safety glasses so I don't get this in my eyes or breathe it in. And I'm going to start grinding it down. So onyx is a very hard material, and I tried a couple other bits that I don't have in this video, trying to see if I can cut it down that way, even the file like I've done in a previous video, and absolutely nothing worked on it. So I pretty much had to use the lathe to cut this down, or it just wouldn't work. But now with everything pretty much cut down, there's a lot of spots that are missing, so I'm going to fill them in with the opal, and cover them up with a little bit more of the brass powder. So this is pretty much to my liking, and I'm going to spin this up again and add some CA to fill in any of the extra gaps and just let it continue to spin. So now with it all covered like that, I took it off and the inside of it is completely covered in glue that I need to take off and same thing with the sides. So just wet sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper should take everything off the sides. As for the inside, I'm going to be using a rotary tool with a grinding wheel on it to grind all the rest of the glue off of the inside. And all that's left to do is polish the ring and clean it all up. And here it is after it's all done. I do really like how it came out, and how everything looks. There are a couple things I would change to make it a little bit easier to make, and to bring out some more of the colors, but I really do like it. So if you're looking for the ring mandrel tools that I got in this video and used, head over to ringsupplies.com. They actually gave me a discount code to give out to all of you, so you can save some money on anything you order from them. So you can get ring blanks if you want, you can get blanks of different materials to cut down, and you can get the mandrels like I have, and a bunch of other stuff. But if you go in here, you can see this is the set that I got. It's everything with the holder, but if you just want the stainless steel um, ring mandrels by themselves, they're right here, and you can pick what size you want. and then go to checkout and view your cart. So once you're in here, go to checkout and then you're gonna want to put your discount in here which is Go Meow Creations. And there you go.
and all of these will be shipping from Canada. So if you're in Canada, great. If you're not, it'll take maybe a week or so for them to get to you, but they get to you pretty quick. Well, if you like this video, leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave a comment below. And if you want to be updated whenever I post new videos, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. I try to put out stuff like this every week. Well, thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.